we're beginning Advent, so we're starting to light the candles. We light four candles, and, um, and in that we'll be unpacking part of what it is to be in Christ consciousness. But I want to just give you a big overview today from the unity perspective about um, what it is to be on the path. But in general, my belief is that Jesus was a real person, but a real person that was depicted in the Gospels in a mythological way. So some of the things in that, those Gospels probably aren't exactly what we would call accurate, but they are more in line with the depth of what it is to be a human and to be an ex- a mythological way of saying it or metaphysical way of saying something, which is a guidepost for how to unfold our own divine being, our own essence. So the story isn't necessarily the facts. The story is the patterning of how to unfold as a human being. And Jesus is the great example in our way of thinking. He is the one that exemplified being a most awake human being that we know. He and, in my opinion, Buddha, they are like the two top dogs on this. And so we can go by their lives in so many ways to figure out how to do our own. Jesus makes some bold claims in the Gospels. Basically, he says, I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. It is not I who do the work, but it is the Father within me that does the work. Before Abraham was, I am. He says some big, big, bold statements. And we take that as, well, Jesus gets to say that. Most of the history of Christianity has been Jesus was the great exception Only he can say those things. They are not for all of us. But the thing about unity and its philosophy is that essentially it says those are powerful words, yes, indeed, and they are very special, but you should not keep them just in Jesus' mouth, but should speak them yourself. This should be your truth, your experience, that you should come to the point in your development at some point you will be so different by degree that you will be different in kind. You will be another type of human being. You will be a a Christed being. What the typical way that unity would say it is that divine, that possibility had the thought of the universe and the thought in the mind of God unfolded into what we see as this. And also within the mind of God, there was the thought Humanity, and that humanity, that that thought humanity is the, in the mind of God, that thought of humanity is what we call the Christ. It is a pattern inside the unfolding of energy and, and spirit coming into presence. And the outpicturing of that is each one of us. So there's only one Christ, the pattern that is thought in the mind of God, and by emanation, not so much by creation, by manipulation, but by emanation just flowing out from the divine as itself, it flows through this pattern and it forms the pattern of, of human and we are out picturing of it. Each one of us is a result of that thought of God in the pattern of human coming into existence as a, individuals. And so we have an individual named Jesus who identified not so much with his circumstances, his circumstancing being that he was born somewhere in the Middle East to parents of human form, etc. Not He didn't identify with that. He identified with the Christ presence, the patterning of the divine idea of human. He believes of him and thinks of himself not as a it, but as thou, not as a person, but as God. And so he says, I am, if you've seen me, and he's not talking about his skin and bones so much, but if you really see me, you see the Father. The Father, it's not I who does the work, but this divine presence is emanating out as me. I am not just a human being, I am that that and that's what Jesus did and so Fillmore comes along 1800 and some odd years later and he goes 
I think we should be saying that. So if Charles Fillmore comes along and says, I'll give you some words of wisdom. Why don't you listen to me say my affirmations? I am the son of God. Right there. Jesus got in trouble with that a long time ago. I mean, here's the, just had, I am the son of God and the spirit of the most high dwells in me. I am the only begotten son dwelling in the bosom of the father. So when he says, I am the only begotten son, does not mean that in this distal, tiny aspect of God, no. It's this part when he's coming into the Christ presence, the Christ patterning. I am the Christ, what do you, let me just rephrase it in my words. I am the Christ patterning dwelling in the center of God. Through Christ, I have dominion over every thought and word. So if Charles Fillmore, the, the things you thought and or felt, the way the things you thought felt, create your world. So if you can master your thought feelings, you can master your world and your circumstances. But he awoke to his true nature when he spent every night for a week going to sleep, imagining what it was like to be Jesus. At the end of that week, he wakes up to his true nature. You are what you think you are, what you imagine yourself to be, who you, you this, this divine, this pattern, the Christ, and this distal experience of yourself as just a physical being you're all those things all at once. They're always already true. You already always have been that and this. And for a brief number of years, this. But you've always been this. Before Abraham was, I am. Point your mind this way to experience that versus that way to consume all of your thought.